This is one of the secrets to, to some of the ancient teachings that have been with us for many, many years and have many, many interpretations. Here's another one. <laughs> and I kind of like this one because it's a secret that was hidden within this diagram. Anybody recognize this diagram? Anybody not recognize this diagram? Most people probably will. Okay. This is the tree of life. Okay. Now, if you will notice, and for people who are really familiar with the tree of life, there are usually 10 circles on it. We have 12. There's a reason for that. And before I explain the reason why we have 12, I need to explain to you what they are. Now this is exciting stuff, because if you learn this, and if you learn the stuff that's on the next diagram, you'll have an understanding of how you can directly influence your DNA strands. And that's exciting. This is a roadmap to your DNA, and that's, I, I'm very excited, so pardon me for saying that too many times. <laughs> okay, now, these circles, which I believe in the traditional interpretations are called sephiroth, we simply call them cathara spheres. They are composites of frequency tones that form crystallizations that take on a spherical form. And within your body, there are positions within the morphogenetic level of your body that these spheres exist. Now, the twelfth sphere, which is the big one, if the, the twelfth sphere holds in it the codes for the whole silicate matrix 12-strand DNA pattern. All right. That exists within the 10th chakra. Now, we have dealt with the 10th chakra in earlier classes. The 10th chakra is about 6 inches up above the head. Okay, so the 12th Thara sphere is located in the 10th chakra. Now, going downward, the 11th Thara sphere is located in the pineal. This is your crown jewel. This is what connects you to the twelfth one. Now the twelfth one is often called the capstone because when you fully activate the codes, the electromagnetic frequencies that are contained within that, you you can you have control over your entire gene code. You can embody your oversoul. You can transmute into the next harmon harmonic universe or right into the etheric level of the universes. You have complete mastery over matter density levels. And that's awesome. I don't have it. I'm not activated there but it's a potential I'd love to try. <laughs> okay, now, coming downward, we have the ninth and 10th Cathara spheres. Now, the ninth and 10th are located in the head. They're actually part of the acupressure point system. If you, like in Chinese medicine or Japanese medicine, they have acupressure points. There are two points somewhere right upward and behind the ears a little bit. And if you play around with your skull a little, you can feel them. They're, almost, they're a little soft, and they just have a feel. Like you feel a little bit of strange energy push on it when you push your fingers on it. Different. It's not as hard as the other spots. Okay, the ninth and tenth cathara spheres are located back there. Now, it, it helps to understand where they are for several reasons. For one, you can stimulate them by direct touch or projecting energy into them. For two, if you're going to be reprogramming anything that's in them to reprogram your DNA from the morphogenetic level, you want to know where it is so you can direct the energy the right way. Okay. Now, everybody got to take one of these home so you get to have you know, the map to your morphogenetic level one with you. <laughs> but, all right, now, the eighth cathara is located right down in here in the region of what we have marked as the eighth chakra on our chakra diagrams. And it's also in the area of the thyroid. And it affects the thyroid gland directly. So when the, when the frequencies that are contained within the eighth catharosphere begin to activate, they will affect the thyroid and thus the metabolic rate. And they will yeah, affect, and that will also create another arc with the pineal gland. So you will have energy dynamics taking place that will shift the metabolic rates of the body. It'll shift the breathing rate, the heart rate, it will shift all sorts of things that we can consider the autonomic processes that supposedly we have no control over. Well, they're, they're, these are the control buttons to these processes, and they, they do operate automatically through the programs that are contained within the catharospheres, which manifest into the DNA. Now, um, the sixth and seventh catharospheres, these are, I, I call these the angel wings because <laughs> They're located right around here in kind of like the hollow indent. You can push around. There's, there's more. Again, they're on acupressure points. 
you can find them if you push because they, they usually hurt a little. <laughs> They're usually a little tender and they will go out the back. They, they run all the way through where you can feel them on both sides, like around the wing bones in the back. You can feel them in both sides. Okay, so that's where they are. Now the fifth is located at the navel. The fourth and third in a female is located over the ovaries and in a male it's located in the same position but he doesn't have ovaries <laughs> okay so it's in the same positions down around the hip bone areas okay the second one on a female it is located actually within the birth canal and with a male it's located right very very close to the prostate gland it's not in it but it's very very close to the prostate gland and the first catharosphere is located actually at the earth's core and it connects you to the race morphogenetic field, and it connects you to the earth morphogenetic field. So your morphogenetic field, which you can visualize as a crystal chelon body, that looks something like that, mm -hmm. is connected to your physical body and to other things that you don't quite see yet, like the earth's core and higher dimensions. This one will connect you to the 13th dimension, where you connect to a whole other one of these that's called the universal tree of life that takes you completely out of the dimensional matrix. While you're in a body, all you need to worry down here, all you need to worry about is first activating this area and then later th this will be your soul matrix. And as you pull these, sorry, as you pull these in, then you will activate these which will bring in your oversoul level of identity. And then you'll pull in these where you'll bring in your avatar level of identity and then you'll tap into your Rishi level of identity and begin transmutation completely out of form. But you don't have to worry about that now. What we need to think about now is, okay, what can we do with that knowledge? <laughs> you know, there's got to be something useful we can get out of that. And, and there is. If we understand the correspondences of the cathara spheres to the DNA strands. Now, we have 12 DNA strands. Now, the, the cathara spheres are... The, the first morphogenetic imprint for the DNA strand. So Cathara Sphere 1 will hold the program for the base codes and what's called the acceleration codes or the magnetic and the electrical heli of DNA strand 1. So if you want to be able to change a program or a mutation that's occurring in DNA strand 1, that is the sphere that you would use. Same goes for every one of these, okay? This, all of these correspond to the 12 DNA strands. Mm -hmm. Now there are tricks that can be done as far as activating DNA and purging mutations from DNA. The main central vertical line is the control line of the cathara grid. So the cathara spheres, which are 12, 11, 8, 5, 2, and 1, they are the control spheres that will control the programs in all the other spheres. Now, if you want to reprogram what's down here, you can start up here, but that would be too high frequency. You will not plug it in to the body. You have to start at, they start at the middle point, which is your point of coming into manifestation here. When you're dealing with, with these levels, you're dealing with the avatar level of identity, they go from the eight point, which corresponds to the center point in the 15 dimensional matrix, the eight. They're moving downward from that. They're taking that eight point, the codes that are contained, the electromagnetic signatures of energy that are contained within the eighth sphere. They set the pattern for the eighth strand, but the eighth strand contains within it all strands below it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to straighten out any of these codes, you use that one and you can reprogram all of the lower codes and reprogram out mutations in the strands by using the eighth sphere. And that's what we will be doing during the solar activation.